Hello and welcome back to the Python programming course. Today we're moving on with uh, Seaborn. So previously we looked at a few examples just to get to know Seaborn a little bit and understand what it's all about, how it works. Uh, looked at a few really great examples in their gallery, but today we'll proceed with actually working on our challenge. So let's move to it uh, right away. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start our plot. And as we remember, we need to plot internet users by birth rate or birth rate by internet users. So we want to see if there's any kind of patterns that we can observe when we plot those two parameters against each other. So let's go ahead and do that right away. This three equals SNS. So we're just going to continue with enumeration. SNS and the one we need this time. So shift tab or actually SNS dot tab. And if you scroll down, scroll down, the one we need is called LM plot. All right, I'll just type it in LM plot. There we go. LM plot. And uh, LM stands for linear model and linear model plot. And what we want is we want to pass it some data. So we want to say stats. And then here we get two parameters. So if you click shift tab, you'll see now let's expand this plot and data and regression model uh, fits across a facet grid etc etc so here we've got x y data so they in uh, seaborn they come in this order personally i'm kind of uh, used to specifying data first and then uh, so that get it out of the way and then specify the columns you can do it either way you'll see quite a lot of examples uh, on the internet or other people specifying it this way they'll say x equals internet users so let's put internet users on the x-axis and y equals birth rate that's going to be the y-axis so a lot of people do it this way. Let's run that. You'll see there it is. So that's internet users birth rate. And that's, that's the linear model. That's the regression model. But personally, I prefer it to do it the way you do it in R. You put the dot at the start so that you kind of get, get it out of the way, right? You, you already know just by looking at this, you know, which data set you're working with. And then everything else comes later. I find this approach better. It doesn't matter, again, if you're specifying the names of the parameters, it doesn't matter in which order you're specifying them. You can specify them in any order. The, you will start running into problems if you don't specify the name, because if you don't specify the name, you can see that first you're supposed to specify X, then Y, then data. So if you don't specify data equals X equals and Y equals, then you need to specify in that order. But otherwise, if you're specifying uh, the names, which is a good habit to do to have, that's okay. Uh, you can do it in either, in either order. So there we go. That's the plot. Obviously, we don't, obviously it's not, <laughs> uh, it's not ready yet. And it doesn't look like a linear relationship. As we will get closer, we'll zoom in and see this a bit closer. You'll notice that it's not a uh, linear relationship. Well, I don't think it is one. So fitting a linear regression model here doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're just going to say there's a parameter. So if you click shift tab here, it's very useful in, the Jupyter notebooks that you can click shift tab and just get all of this help in R, for example, you have to type in the question mark and uh, run an operation. So uh, that's, uh, it brings it up in a separate window. It's also pretty useful, but I find this very handy so you can, and then it just disappears. It doesn't take up space on your screen. So the one we want here, the parameter that we're looking for, as you can see, there's lots of parameters. Mm -hmm -hmm. The parameter that we want, where it is, where is it? Uh, it's called um, fit. There it is, a fit regression. So we're going to, as you can see, by default, it's true. We want to set it to false. So there, that line disappears. It's not there. So let's go ahead and do that. Fit a regression equals false. I run that. I did something wrong. Okay, so obviously, let me click shift tab again. Yep, sometimes fit reg. So not regression, fit reg. If you run that, there we go. That's our regression or that's our, that's our plot without the regression. And the other thing I want to do is we want to break it up into income groups, right? So right now we can't really tell, there is a pattern. So you can see that the more internet users you have in a country, the lower the birth rate over here and the more birth rate uh, or the less internet users, the higher the birth rate. So it looks like there is kind of a pattern and it looks like a one over X type of relationship. And uh, also you can see that here in internet users, we have a cluster here at uh, 20 and then it's consistent and then drops off. So let's see if we see that here as well. So this is like the same plot, but now it's like and stretched out. So here that's that cluster there and then it's consistent and then drops off, right? And then you could plot, by the way, here's a quick challenge for you. Do the same plot for instead of internet users, do it for birth rate. 
and see if you can find uh, how it looks right so help you out with that uh, let's i'm because i'm also curious now let's do this and here we'll say this so we've done this three there's going to be this four and instead of using it users let's say birth rate and you'll see that here with birth rate we've got a hump and then we've got a bit of a hump here as well so with birth rate we've got a lot of countries here even though you can't really tell that there's so many oh no actually other way around my bad so this is 10 that's where the countries are so that's a lot of countries because this is going upwards so that's where this is and then this bit is actually over here interesting anyway so i'm going to delete this because that's not part of the plan the plan is to get this to the next stage and next stage for this chart is um add some color so let's add some color i'm going to put the backslash here and add a new line comma hue hue is the parameter for color income group if i run that you'll see that now it's got color and we've got the high income group they're all sitting over here lots of internet users low birth rate and then we've got the low income group sitting over here low internet users high birth rate and then you got the lower middle income and the higher middle upper middle income it's just funny that um it sounds like when people have internet they don't have time to make kids or like uh, have children when they have no internet they have lots of time to create children and raise them and take care of them so very very interesting concept of course um correlation does not imply causation and there can be other reasons why it's like that because these are first world countries and uh, they have access to internet and but at the same time there are other social per uh, perhaps reasons why people don't have that many children and then the opposite happens in the low income countries uh, they're still developing worlds which don't have access to internet and uh, for again social or traditional reasons they have a uh, loss of children but it's just an interesting observation and the other thing that we wanted to do is increase the size what you will notice is that this size has increased this size has increased right these charts have increased in size this one for some reason hasn't increased and i'll prove it to you i can even change this to let's say 10 4 and let's say or let's say 10 10 8 even if i run that run this you'll see that this one grows quite a lot and then if i run this line again this one doesn't change at all so what's going on there why is this parameter being ignored so i'm just going to replace this back with 84 so it doesn't mess up our future charts rerun all of that so what's going on why is this function lmplot ignoring that parameter great question let's look at shift tab here and if you open it up you'll see that plot data and regression model and then it's got this line that fits across a facet grid so a facet grid is something uh, we'll talk about further down in the course but a facet grid is basically when you have like lots of these charts together so you have a chart and another one like side by side and, and they come in a grid because you're changing some parameter across there those different charts and therefore there's like a grid of nine charts or something and therefore facet grids they take up quite a lot of space and they like the seaborne guys decided that they need their own parameter in terms to control the size of these charts because it's it has to be very precise so that's why here to change the size i'm just going to do it right here uh you just say size equals 10 for instance and that will increase the size here and also another parameter you get to play around with is aspect is the proportions of the widths and height so by default it's one that's the aspect one to one but what we can change it to is we can say like let's say a two for example then it gets stretched out this way or you can say a 0 0.5 and it gets stretched out this way so we're going to leave it at uh, we're just going to take it out we're not going to change the aspect parameter but it's a good level of control that you get over your visualizations especially if you're doing a facet grid there we go that's our plot it looks much better but so far there's one thing missing and that is that these markers are very small that you can barely see them on this chart like again if i zoom out it will look better of course and probably we don't even need it to be that gr that large we can change the size from 10 to something lower but at the same time the markers are very small we can barely see what's going on so we're going to figure out uh, we're going to learn how to increase the size of the markers in the next tutorial and i look forward to seeing you next time until then happy coding <laughs>